Hello everyone, welcome to Lost in the Episode. Today is a really exciting day because I have now finally seen HBO Max's The Nevers. And I've always been really afraid to talk about this because I've kind of been keeping it a secret my whole life. But this show has given me the courage to come out and say that I have powers too. And now the whole world knows it. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the first four episodes of HBO's The Nevers. HBO's The Nevers premiered its first episode on April 11th, 2021, and tune in every Sunday at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on HBO Max for more. This is going to be a non-spoiler review for the first four episodes of Season 1. The show is created by Joss Whedon and stars Laura Donnelly, James Norton, Anne Skelly, Tom Riley, Olivia Williams, and Nick Frost. This is an epic tale following a gang of Victorian women who find themselves with unusual abilities, relentless enemies, and a mission that might change the world. So this show has already gotten off on the wrong foot because of the controversy and bad behavior of its creator, Joss Whedon. I will start off by saying this. I do not approve of his actions whatsoever, if they are true, but I try to go into every film or television show with an open mind. And we also have to think about the hundreds of other people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into this project. Let's not let one man's misdeeds affect everyone else by boycotting caughting this show? That just wouldn't be right. I've also noticed that HBO has really tried to separate themselves from Mr. Wayden by pretty much completely hiding the fact that he has any involvement with this show whatsoever in the advertisements, which seems to have been a success because the premiere was the highest rated ever for an original series on the streaming service. So that bodes really well for the show in the future. Okay, so now let's get started. I was immediately taken aback by the incredible world building here. The backdrop of 1896 Victorian London mixed with steampunk fantasy immediately got my knickers in a twist. Everything about the production is just wonderful and completely immerses you into this world. The production, makeup, and costume design are all top-notch. I must say that some of the visual effects didn't work for me as much, but I also received a rough cut of episodes 3 and 4, so there is still time for them to tweak those issues. We follow Amelia True and Penance Adair as they run their orphanage of sorts for The Touched, which are these people who have been afflicted by a strange occurrence three years ago that all caused them to gain strange powers. The rest of the people who were unchanged on that day find these touched people a danger to society and thus begin to retaliate against them. I must say that this show has so many characters that it begins to get a little overwhelming trying to keep track of everybody. Not only do we have a slew of protagonists, but we also have a handful of villains all vying for the spotlight of the show. And for a season that will only have six episodes, there is an underlying feeling of this being way too overstuffed for its own good. The only characters that I really care about so far are Miss True and the rest of The Touched at the Orphanage. These characters are the beating heart of the show, and the only reason why we are sticking along for the ride. I believe it was a huge mistake to throw in these well-to-do, non-afflicted characters who so far have not validated their existence in this show storyline whatsoever. Like James Norton's Lord Swan, who takes up far too much of the show's runtime with his dabbling in making a business out of his illegal sex club. This just all seemed pointless to me, and every time he was on screen, I kept saying to myself, get back to Lady True and the gang for peace. Pete's sakes. I mean, I don't know if I said Pete's sakes, but whatever. 
And also, masterclass performers like Nick Frost and Olivia Williams have been relegated to the sidelines here, which is extremely unfortunate, but hopefully that changes in the last two episodes. Laura Donnelly, who is probably most well known for her supporting role in the show Outlander, is so utterly watchable here as Amalia True. You just fall in love with her the moment that she appears in episode one. Her grit, wit, and kick-ass unladylike tendencies make for a fascinating lead character. She also has an air of mystery surrounding her constantly, so we never really know what she is going to be up to next. I also have fallen in love with her sidekick and best friend, Penance Adair, whose quippy and whimsical air adds a lightness to the show that is much needed. Okay, so now let's get into episodes two through four without any spoilers, of course. I found each installment to have its highs and lows. One thing that was glaringly different to me is how in episode three, the nudity, sex, language, and violence was all of a sudden ramped up to level 10. The show so far had had a bit of those aspects sprinkled in, but in just that episode, it's almost as if they felt like they needed to make it HBO worthy or something. I don't know. But I kind of appreciated the fact that this show didn't go all out with the gratuitous nature that most series on the channel just seem to shoehorn in because it's HBO. And then, of course, they went there, but they do rein it back in in episode four, fortunately. Uh, there are some truly amazing set pieces here, too. There's an action scene with a man who walks on water in episode three. Uh, I won't give anything else away, but that scene just blew me away. There's this feeling that the show has endless possibilities, and the amount of creativity here is just so exciting. From the gadgets, to the powers, to the mysteries and conspiracies, The Nevers really does provide a slew of captivating stories, and there's so much room for it to grow and flourish. As episode 4 came to a close with a pretty breathtaking cliffhanger, I realized that the time had just flown by. And even though all of it was quite silly and a bit messy, I am definitely hooked. So, in Lost in the Episode, there are four tiers that the show can be rated in. Must watch, watch if you like the genre that it exists in, only watch if you have nothing else in your queue, and of course, just skip it altogether. I have seen that The Nevers has not gotten the best response from critics so far, and I can see why. Whether it be the fact that Wayden is involved, or that this is very much so genre television, or even the fact that this show is pretty silly, has some clunky dialogue, and definitely is still finding its footing. All of that aside though, the protagonists are captivating, the many mysteries so far are thrilling, the world building is top notch, and the creativity is boundless. So, I will say that you should watch this if you like steampunk fantasy. Like I said, after these four episodes were done, I was hooked, and I cannot wait for more. But what I would really like for this show to do, if it gets picked up for another season, is to really tighten it up and get rid of the dead weight, because it is way too overstuffed. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Episode. We will see you soon.